Saturday morning, the day before race day in Tremblant. I'm going to show you what I do today in order to prep and make sure I'm ready for the big day tomorrow. I got up at about 6.15 this morning. Uh, as most people will tell you, the night before the night before a Ironman is most important for you to get sleep. So I got a good about uh, eight and a half to nine hours sleep last night. I had some breakfast this morning. Standard breakfast is a bagel with almond butter and honey. And I'm now uh, on my way to pick up Lisa from uh, the airport in Montreal because she's uh, come for the weekend to watch me race and brought some Gatorade with me. Is I'll uh, I'll be drinking some Gatorade throughout today just to make sure I'm uh, well hydrated, but not overly hydrated that I'm flushing important um, minerals and salt out of my body. Here's a little song I wrote. You might want to sing it note for note. Don't worry. Be happy. So just finished the pre-race trek for uh, for my bike. A couple of things that I like to go over. I check first for brake rubs. Sometimes uh, when you're traveling somewhere, um, either your tires uh, might not be in quite right, uh, quite aligned properly, or brake can get bumped and you don't want any, uh, any brake rub on, uh, on race day. I'll also switch to a race chain. So it's a chain I use just for racing. Um, I take much better care of it than just my everyday chain. Uh, it's a chain that I wax. Um, just it uh, it saves you a little bit in uh, in drive line friction. Besides that, um, just anything that are can be common problems with your bike. So Cervelo P4 is known for seat post slipping, so I'll make sure that uh, my seat post is clamped properly. Uh, I'll make sure um, that my gears are shifting well and that I've got everything that I need for uh, for race morning on my bike. The last thing I'll do to get my bike ready for race day is mark the bars. So I put on the left-hand side uh, important turns for the course and on the right-hand side where all the aid stations are. I like uh, noting different turns on the course because it helps me break up the course into smaller pieces so I know how far I have to go uh, to, um, uh, to different landmarks along the course. And then I find having the aid stations is really great, uh, especially if uh, I miss something at an aid station or uh, if I'm getting low at Gatorade, I know uh, how long I have to go in uh, until I'm at the next station. Just finished lunch, had some pasta. I know a lot of the science says that you don't necessarily need to uh, carbo load or get a lot of that stuff in uh, before a big endurance race, but it's what I've always done and it seems to work for me and I really enjoy it, so uh, it's something that I stick with. Uh, now kind of for the rest of the afternoon it really will just be um, putting uh, putting my feet up not doing uh, not doing much until dinner time and we'll look to have a, uh, a relatively early dinner uh, hopefully eating at about five so I've got time to digest so that I can uh, get to bed at a good time in terms of how I'm feeling uh, I feel pretty good for the uh, for the race tomorrow I haven't done uh, a ton of training since Lake Placid four weeks ago I raced the Kingston long course race two weekends ago and then raced Bracebridge last week those are kind of the hard workouts that I've uh, that I've done between the two races, and then uh, spent some uh, done some easy miles, both running uh, on the trainer and um, uh, and getting into the pool a little bit. Uh, I feel like the training that I did for Lake Placid it's still in my legs, uh, so I should be ready to go uh, for a good race tomorrow. This is a course that I really like. It's got uh, quite a bit of elevation change but I find the way that the elevation comes at you it can be a relatively fast course especially on the bike uh, the fantastic road conditions definitely help with that as well so uh, really for me uh, looking at going under uh, under nine hours so in the 850 something range and if I'm in that range I think there's a lot of guys who are who are looking at that so you might find from fifth place all the way back to 12th or 13th are uh, are kind of vying uh, for uh, for a time just under uh, just under nine hours so should be an interesting race especially with so many people uh, who can be uh, real threats or real contenders in the race making their debut so it's gonna be all uh, all new territory for them especially the latter half of uh, the latter half of the run so for me it's gonna be really uh, important to focus on what I know that I can do I've 
uh, this is going to be, uh, I think, my fifth Iron Man now, so I have a pretty good idea of what I am or am not capable of, and uh, you know, just sticking to uh, sticking to that plan because a lot can happen in the final 10 kilometers of an Iron Man. Bikes racked and ready to go. As you can see behind me, most of the other pros have chosen not to uh, rack their bike. But since I uh, am going to be staying off site, it's just a lot easier if uh, if I rack it uh, today as opposed to trying to uh, somehow get here this morning and then get the car back to the shuttle. Uh, I was looking at like it's going to be a little bit wet overnight, so I'll just cover up uh, some of the electronics and then uh, put the bike to bed. Just finished dinner, which was a, another big plate of pasta with homemade sauce made by uh, Valerie at my homestay that was really good. So now it's uh, a little after six. It's just time to put my feet up, got my legs in some uh, recovery boots and uh, start to wind down to try and get to bed at a good time. I'm here with Danny and Valerie, my very uh, gracious homestay hosts for Ironman Mont Thank you. So why did the two of you decide to uh, step up and be a homestay for athletes from out of town? When one of our friends asked us, uh, well, why you don't uh, receive people, younger people or athletes from all around the world? We say, okay, that will be a nice, uh, a good idea yeah, and uh, a nice opportunity to uh, to see you know and receive some tips and experience for other athletes because we're beginner athletes exactly so it's just fun to exchange some idea with them and see how their life is perfect so um you've lived in trauma for uh, for a few years so yep. what impact have you seen this race having on uh, on the local community but the Iron Man brings a lot over here. They bring like the uh, our new our new pool, yeah, and uh, place to get uh, the training uh, for the Iron Man, like uh, practice uh, cycling, yeah, and uh, running. The running, and I, we see the, the most impact. I think it's for for the kids also because they want to be more active, yeah, and the parents also because here when you go to the old village or just in the village here in Saint Javier, you see the people are biking, running, or cycling. So you say, okay, you know, if they can do it, maybe I can do it, and it's in our town, so why not to do a race in our town? And for and for children, if they see their parent always moving, always training, for sure they will do the same. That's great. So both of you are triathletes and you have a race coming up at uh, Lake Placid 70.3. Yep. So um, do you use the uh, the local bike paths and the, the lake for the race? Is that where you do all your training? Always, always. It's so easy from where we live. We go on the bike path. After that, we get the, the, uh, the, the course of the bike. It's very easy to use. It's uh, secure. And for running also, it's easy for uh, everything. So uh, let's go all in. Perfect. <laughs> all right, thank you very much. No problem. That's a wrap on my day before an Ironman video. Hope to see everybody at the finish line. Oh, this new crazy mother...